Welcome to a Code Report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Chef Got Recipes from the Code Chef March 2019 Long Challenge. The problem states, Chef has N dishes, numbered 1 through N. For each valid I, dish I is described by a string DI containing only lowercase vowels, the characters A, E, I, O, and U. A meal consists of exactly two dishes. Preparing a meal from dishes I and J, where I does not equal J, means concatenating the strings DI and DJ in an arbitrary order into a string M describing the meal. Chef likes this meal if the string M contains each lowercase vowel at least once. Now, Chef is wondering, what is the total number of unordered pairs of dishes such that he likes the meal prepared from these dishes? And the constraints for this problem, which are going to be very important, are T, the number of test cases, will be between 1 and 1,000, N, the number of dishes, individual dishes that we have are between 1 and 10 to the 5, uh, the number of ingredients or characters in each dish will be between 1 and 1,000, and the sum of all DI over all test cases won't exceed 3 times 10 to the 7th. Um, so let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So here are the test cases. There's only one of them, and we're given three dishes, um, and they are as follows. So the first one consists of the vowels uh, A and O. The second one consists of the vowels U, I, and E. And the third one consists of the vowels A, E, I, and O. So the only one missing is U. And uh, we're given that the uh, answer for this will be two. So if we take a look at the explanation that Code Chef kindly provided us with, it says that there are three possible meals. Um, if we prepare it by combining dishes one and two, we get the following, which does contain all vowels. There's an A, there's an O, there's a U, there's an I, and there's an E. If we combine uh, dishes one and three to prepare a meal, it fails because it doesn't contain the value. So this one does not equal a meal that the chef will like. And for the last combination of dishes two and three, we do get, once again, all of the vowels U, I, E, A, and O. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward to understand. Um, but the constraints of this problem are pretty hefty, so doing a brute force solution is going to fail. So if we take a look at the constraints again, we notice that uh, the number of dishes that we're going to have is uh, between 1 and 10 to the 5. So in the worst case, we'll have 10 to the 5 uh, dishes. And so in order to compare each dish with every other dish, brute force would be a quadratic algorithm. And that would give us uh, 10 to the 5 squared, which would immediately put us over our 10 to the 8th um, sort of operations requirement in order to pass. So I believe that there was sort of a, a sub-easier version of this problem where n was reduced. Um, and in that case, we only need to make one insight in order to, I believe, get that to pass. And that is that uh, we don't need to, when we're doing the uh, brute force of comparing every dish with every other dish, and then looping through the combined uh, meal, the string M, which is each of the dishes just added together, um, that could be up to, if we have for each of the dishes the worst case, a thousand characters, you could end up with a meal that is 2,000 characters long. But it's pretty easy to notice that we don't need the full uh, 1,000 characters in the worst case for each of these dishes. We can just reduce these to uh, strings that are sorted um, and that only have distinct characters. So this would look as follows, AO, EIU, and AEIO. Um, and this way, instead of ending up with a meal or a string M that could have 2,000 characters, we have in the worst case a string uh, that has uh, five characters or ten characters, depending on how you implement your algorithm. It could be five, it could be ten. Um, but the point is that's way less than 2,000, uh, a couple orders of magnitude. And um, I believe if you make this insight and then you brute force sort of the n squared with the lower n, you'll end up um, getting sort of the 20 point sub problem. Um, but there's one more insight that we need to make in order to get the full solution, and that is that. Um, due to the fact there's only five characters or five vowels, uh, we have a very limited set of actual strings that we can generate um, that either have one, two, three, four, or five characters and any combination of the sort of vowels. And that will end up being sort of five factorial. Uh, but the point is, is that we can store all the duplicates because we can have up to 10 to the 5 when really there's only 120 unique uh, strings or dishes that we can have. Um, we can st store the duplicates in a map. Um, 
uh, in Java, it would be a tree map. In Python, it would be a sorted dictionary. And in C++, it's just going to be our uh, st uh, std map. And if we do this, then instead of just sort of doing a plus one in the brute force, we can just do a multiplication of the count of um, each of our sort of unique dishes and uh, get our total that way. So we don't really need to walk through this one. I think walking through the code is enough. It's just really we need to make these two different insights. One that we can sort of shrink um, our main dish into a smaller dish. And the second insight is that we can store duplicate dishes uh, in a map. So let's take a look at our C++ solution. So here is our main function. At the top, we're reading in t the number of test cases, and then we have our while loop for our t test cases. At the top of this while loop, we're reading in n the number of dishes that we have, and then we're declaring our map, which is going to store our sort of shrinked uh, dish as the key, and then a long long, which is going to be the count of the number of these dishes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, loop through, read in all of our n dishes, and then we are going to insert our uh, dish once we shrink it, and then do a plus plus uh, to increment the count of this unique dish. So if we take a look at our shrink function, uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you've been watching uh, these videos on this channel for a while, you'll recognize this pattern. In order to get sort of the uh, unique characters in a string or the unique values in a vector, you can sort it and then use the algorithm unique, which basically removes all duplicate items that are adjacent to each other. And once you've sorted it, you know that you're basically going to um, end up with just each of the uh, unique characters or vowels in this case and then we just need to uh, remove the characters that are uh, remaining in sort of the uh, end of our string and then just return this s then we come back to our main function at this point we can start to calculate the number of uh, meals that the chef is going to like and we can do that by initializing a long long answer to be zero then we have a nested for loop using our range base for loops uh, we're looping through each of the pairs of dishes or unique dishes that we have and we're checking to make sure that we're not trying to combine the same dish and then we uh, make a call to our has all vowels function and we're passing in uh, the two unique uh, dishes as the two parameters to this function if we take a look at this function this probably isn't the most efficient implementation but it's very readable and very concise um, so we take our two strings a and b uh, we declare a set which is just basically going to store all our characters or in this case we're just converting them to ints and then we loop through range base for loop insert, insert all the elements in our string a and then we do the same thing for our string b and at the end we just check is the size equal to five if so we know that we have all the vowels and so we return a boolean here and coming back to our main function once again so as long as this uh, function returns true we then want to add to our running total of the number of meals that the chef will like um, the multiplication of the count of each of the unique dishes. Um, so we need to do this in order to get the total. We can't just do a post increment or a plus one. So we finish our range based, our nested range based for loop, and then we have to make sure to divide this by two because, due to the fact that we are um, looping over the full range each time we're going to end up with twice as many as we need we could have avoided this using sort of a, a raw indexed for loop um, but that ends up in more characters and this is a little bit nicer and then there's one thing we have to do at the very end which is a corner case and that's basically checking um, for how many uh, dishes um, by themselves uh, appended with sort of um, any other dish that contains all the vowels uh, will have um, will we have in our sort of dish list and so all we need to do is search for this specific unique uh, sh uh, sort of shrinked dish AEIOU if we find it we basically just want to add uh, the count of it uh, times the count minus one divided by two and this is just getting basically every handshake that you can get with this uh, unique uh, dish count and then adding that to our total and once we've done that, we have our answer. So 
The last thing to talk about is the time complexity, um, which is a little bit counterintuitive for this problem. If you work through it, we have t-test cases, so that's definitely going to be there. And then it looks like we have n um, log n insertions here, because uh, an insertion into a map in C++ takes log n time. Um, but this actually is bounded by um, the number of key value pairs that we're going to end up in our map, which we know is bounded by R5 factorial, the number of possible uh, combinations of our uh, five vowels. So that's actually going to be T times N log 5 factorial. And then here we have a nested for loop, which you'd think would be quadratic, but once again, this is bounded by um, the five factorial different combinations of our vowels that we can have and so we end up with something like big O of T all times n log five factorial plus five factorial squared but the five factorial works out to 120 which is constant so we're actually going to drop this term drop this term and what we end up with is just big O of T times n. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.